Hey everyone, it's Amber. Thanks so much for tuning in to my second video, which is all about how to actually execute zero waste grocery shopping. So before you even go to the grocery store, one thing that is great to do is meal plan. Meal planning might be new to you or it might be something you and your family do every week. Um, it's kind of new to me, so I've gotten used to it over the last month as I've been doing the Whole30 diet. But my husband and I have found an app online called Google Keep, which we love. It allows us to share grocery lists and share meal lists for the week so that we're both aware of what we need if one of us stop at the grocery store. Meal planning will help you know exactly what kind of materials you need to bring to the grocery store because you know exactly how many jars you need, how many bags, things like that. So once you have your meals planned, one thing I would recommend doing is getting some really awesome cool grocery bags. Reusable grocery bags are something that most of you probably do already and it's easy for you, but for some people it's not really uh, easy or you're not in the habit. So I'm gonna talk a few about a few grocery bags. So these are two that I love. As you can see, they scrunch down super small. These are made out of 100% recycled plastic, which is awesome. They're Chico bags and you can see they have a little carabiner here so you can clip it to the outside of your purse or your backpack if you're biking. Um, this one is small, it's about one liter and this one gets quite large and it fits a lot of stuff, which is awesome. It doesn't have a flat bottom, which is kind of the only con to this, but it's actually really great. It fits a whole ton of stuff. And I usually keep these in my purse all the time. Uh, that way, even if I stop at like a vintage store or something like that and I find something I want, then I can throw it in my bag and I don't need to use a bag from the checkout counter, which is great. Then my mom always finds these great cute bags, so I have a few of those and I just keep those in my car all the time. Um, I was reading a blog about zero waste and I saw this woman had done this great trick which is she takes a wine bag and she uses that to transport her jars which I thought was a great idea because then it stops them from clinking around um, and that way if you have liquids in them and you don't want them to spill just in case you're not 100% certain that the seal is tight then you can kind of hang it up in your car versus like throwing it on the back seat. And I know there are some of you watching this, Erica Herbson, who probably have plenty of these lying around. So make good use of those. Um, I mentioned these bags in my last video. They're reusable um, produce bags or grocery bags, I guess I should say. They're not just for produce. It's called Bag the Habit, and I got them online. And you might be able to find something similar at your local co-op or maybe you can make some cool drawstring canvas bags. Maybe you're crafty and you could do that. I'm gonna order some more um, similar to these, but canvas, uh, I'm sorry, um, cloth on Etsy um, because I'm not crafty, I can't make these and I would like a few more. So of course I can't find the middle size, but this is the big size and this is the little size and they come in packs of three and it's great. I'm actually gonna be using these for dry goods. So things like Pasta will be in here, probably rice, quinoa, things like that. So those will go in here. One thing about these bags I was going to mention is, you know, you might feel like, oh, I'm eating greens and I'm getting mushrooms and all these things and I want to put them in something and then put them in my cart. When in reality, those greens that you are purchasing and, and wrapping in something and putting in your cart, um, they've been picked from a farm, they've been transported long ways to another area, they've been all over the country, they've already been exposed to all the germs that they could be exposed to. So feel free to grab those greens and throw them in your cart and get home and then wash them and deal with them. You don't feel like, don't feel like you need to have a bag for everything. Um, but you know, if you want to and that's in your budget, that, that's okay. Um, one thing about jars, you should be able to go to your bulk section and you should be able to weigh your jar. And um, some jars, I'm sorry, some grocery stores measure things in ounces and some in pounds, so you'll just want to find that out. But let's say you put this on your scale and it says it's 0 0.04 ounces. I would recommend taking a Sharpie with you that first time and you could write on here the tear, T-A-R-E, that's the weight of your item, is 0 0.04 ounces. Then you take that off, you fill it with whatever you want and you put it back on and then you weigh your whole item, the tear and the ingredients. And then hopefully your grocery store uses a paper-based sticker instead of a plastic sticker, which is really difficult to recycle. And you can put that on there. If you know that it's not a paper-based sticker, maybe you could take a picture, maybe you could just write it. Um, 
you know, you'll have to get a little creative on how to circumnavigate that, but hopefully you can do that so there's no waste. And then you take your jar with your item and when you go to check out, they should be able to subtract the tear from the cost of all your ingredients so that it costs you no extra money to use this jar, which is awesome. So you can also do that on these bags. So I'm gonna be writing on a little piece of cardboard or something how much this bag weighs, or maybe even just write on the bag with Sharpie because that's what I'm gonna use these bags for. So in terms of my jars, I'm gonna bring with me a variety of sizes because I know this week coming, or the first week of February, I'm gonna want a variety of things. So I have this small jar here. Um, I got this from um, our community supported agriculture box, gives us jam every year. This is a leftover jar from that. So again, you do not have to buy jars. You can use ones that you have that are old peanut butter or this one's an old spaghetti sauce jar. Um, and I'm gonna use this for a sweetener. We don't go through that much sweetener, so I don't need a lot, but I love to have agave or maple syrup or honey in my smoothies in the morning and on my oatmeal. So um, I'll be filling this with some kind of sweetener. Um, this is a bigger jar, a quart size. I'm gonna be filling this with a grain, um, probably a rice brown rice, and then this spaghetti jar, which I pointed out, I'll probably be filling this with beans. And beans is something I'm a little nervous about because I'm used to the convenience of deciding last minute I want to make a soup or beans or what have you, and I just grab a can from my pantry and then I use those for my meal. Um, the zero waste commitment I'm making is going to really make me have to plan ahead to know when I want to use the beans so that I can soak them overnight and then cook them for an hour or so before I actually want to put them in the dish. So I will be honest, I'm a little nervous about beans, but at least I'm prepared to go purchase them and try it out, so that's really good. And then I have a few other jars here um, that I like to use that I'll probably fill with, with other things once I'm, once I'm there. Um, if you're someone who likes cheese or meat, um, then I would recommend bringing a container like this. This is the four quart Pyrex container. I got it at Target last week. It was on sale for five bucks. Um, if you go to the counter um, and you ask the butcher, can I have you know X amount of meat and hand this to them, they should really have no problem. Some places are a little hesitant because of sanitary health issues. They're afraid maybe you have um, uh, did a uh, German here that they're going to get exposed to or something like that and if they do bring that up an alternative to one of these is one of these which um, is a bio bag it's a food scrap bag it's sanitary and it's um, affordable you can buy them on Amazon or at your local co-op here at the city of Minneapolis you have to you have organics in your recycling like next to your recycling you also have an organics bin in order to put stuff into the organics bin, you need to have these bags. So I already have these on hand. So I'm gonna put one or two of these into my reusable bag over here so that it's already in there so that if the butcher says, hey, I'm sorry, I can't give you your food in this, then I can say, well, I have this bag and I can show it to them and say, and it's sanitary, it's never been used, can you put this in the bag? And then hopefully they'll say yes. And once they do, I can bring that item home use that item, and then that bag just biodegrades. So that's some way to get around um, if there are some people who are maybe saying, I am having a hard time doing, putting that in there. Also, if you're someone who likes the hot bar, if your grocery store has an awesome hot bar and you're like one of those people who goes to the grocery store and then gets super hungry, I'd recommend bringing an extra one of these so that you can go to the hot bar, get all the food you want in the hot bar, and not have to use your styrofoam and be able to take that home. It would be so great. If you're someone who likes to purchase bread, which I am, some, some areas of the grocery store might have a loaf that you can grab by yourself and then you could bring either a um, bag and you can just put it right in this bag. Or what you can do is you can use these really cool things I found online, I'm gonna show you guys a picture. And they're a beeswax wrap. And for three of them online, you could get them um, for the price of $17.95. Um, some local grocery stores do carry these. The Seward Co-op here does carry them, but not in the bread size. So I might have to buy them online, which is a little bit of a bummer. Um, but that bread size allows you to um, it, uh, lay it out, put your bread on top, and then you wrap your bread in the beeswax wrap, and you just hold on to it for like 15, 20 seconds, and then the wax gets warm enough where it clings to each other. 
clings to itself. And then what you could do is you can take that bread and it's in that rice preservative wrap and you put it in your refrigerator and it's good for like a week, a week and a half and you can just enjoy your bread. That way you do not need to go and get your plastic wrapped bread. If you want to get your bread from the baker, I've heard here in Minneapolis, Bread Smith is receptive to people not using uh, the Bread Smith packaging. And also um, the baker's wife is also another place you can go to get your bread. So one other little tip is stick to the outside of the grocery store. Most people know the outside of the grocery store is where the most whole foods are. And therefore, it's going to be the easiest for you to be zero waste because you're not going to have to be dealing with packaging. If you go in the interior, <laughs> interior the cookies and the crackers and things like that, then it's going to be more difficult to stick to your goal of zero waste. Some places have great bulk sections, and in those bulk sections, you can get delicious things like candy. So I'm not going to promise that going zero waste will uh, make you thinner. Uh, it might make you fatter, who knows, but um, I'm just uh, wanted to point out that there are options for you. And um, if you get some candy, let me know because I'd like some. So I think that's everything that I would bring with me to the um, grocery store when I'm ready to go zero waste grocery shopping. If you have any questions about any of these things, please let me know. And also if you're like, hey, I really want to buy this and I don't know what to do, bring it up and hopefully we can figure it out together. And if you have a great bulk section or a great solution to something, um, please let the rest of this community know. So thanks so much.